So you want to set up your home studio? This is the first steps that you need to take. Let's get started. Let's talk for a minute about setting up your home studio. There's a few things you can get from Cream City Clay that are really helpful in keeping your studio organized and keeping it a stress-free environment. First of all, plastic. Plastic is one of the most important things that you can have in your home studio. And you've got to have a good place to keep it. Plastic is going to get dirty, and you don't want other things to get dirty and dusty. So if you have a little bin at home to keep your plastic in, it's always a good idea. Plastic covers up all the clay that you want to work on the following day. So if you're working on any art pieces that you don't want to dry overnight, keeping it in plastic helps to keep it in the same drying stage that it was the day before and allows you to continue a project day after day. So keeping things in plastic is important. When you get your home kit from Cream City Clay, you're going to have a big piece of plastic with it, but you also can use some plastic at home. Any plastic will do. Pick and save bags, however, are a little bit porous and are prone to having holes in them. So I know a lot of us have pick and save bags at home or grocery bags at home. Make sure you double those up to make sure that those are going uh, to work for you. The next thing that you have in your kit that's really nice to work with is a dowel. Now a dowel can do a lot of different things. We're going to show you in some videos today how to make something flat without using a dowel. Surprisingly, a dowel doesn't really help as much as you might think in making something completely flat. It does help in rolling something out so that you get it flattened out, but if you want it exactly flat and exactly the same thickness all the way through, we're going to show you a better technique for that. The other thing that a dowel does, though, is it's great for giving you um, circles or different kind of uh, pressing techniques that you can use with it if you want to make decorations. It also use, is useful for decorations for tapping on the side of clay and creating ridges in the clay that are interesting when, uh, when you have glaze that's on it. And so dowels can be really helpful in those types of things. Um, but for making a clay flat, we have a better technique than to roll it like you would if you were working with pastry. The other thing at home that is helpful, <coughs> you're going to get a few other pieces of wood. There's a small um, uh, tongue depressor and a large tongue depressor. This, I guess, would be a popsicle stick. <laughs> this would be a tongue depressor. Um, these are great, again, for the same thing we had talked about before, impressing and making uh, half moon shapes in the clay. Uh, and also being able to have a nice straight edge like that is sometimes nice as well for making lines in the clay, uh, any kind of indentations like that. This would also be used uh, in order to cut the clay because it's nice and thin. You can trim pieces off of the clay fairly well uh, when you're working on your surface. Um, the other thing is you have what would be a barbecue stick. It has a pointed end on this side, and it also has a longer piece to it. These can be used for a lot of the same purposes I had discussed with the other ones, but with the pointed end on it, it is much better in order to uh, be able to make holes in something. Uh, and also can be used, since it is a sharp end, it can be used to cut clay as well. So just some creative uses for some of the pieces that you're getting. The last thing that we have in the small area is your brush. And we'll talk about a little bit later about using underglazes with your underglaze kit that you have in order to put color on your piece. But the brush here, this small brush, is the best way to do that. If you have larger areas to, to color, then a larger brush that you might have around the house might work better as well. Last but not least, we have this great big piece of hardy board. Hardy board is fantastic. It really does give you a nice surface to work on. It's nice and smooth. It's more of a concrete type purpose uh, a surface so that it has a great purpose of allowing something to dry um, uh, and be able to take it off and uh, not have all of the residue on the surface. It's easy to clean. Uh, so it really uh, is a nice surface for us to work on at home. So any wedging that you're doing 
uh, or any coiling, anything like that, where you don't want to stick to the surface as much as you'd like it to, a dry piece of hardy board works really, really well for that. So this will be kind of the main work area for your at-home studio. Now that you got your home studio set up, let's get into a few processes that we had mentioned before. The first one is how to make clay absolutely flat into what we call a slab. The first thing you'll do is grab a piece of clay from your, from your chunk of clay that you had got and make it into a ball. Now what's important is that you don't trap any air in the clay as you're making it into a ball. And make it into uh, what you want to practice with first is a ball about the size that fits in the palm of your hand. Then what you'll do is what's called pancaking. What you'll start with is to tap the clay onto your hardy board and flip it every time that you tap it down. We'll start by throwing it straight down and then we're going to make a little bit of a change in just a second. As you start to throw it down and flipping it to each side, you'll notice it looks a little bit like a hockey puck. As, you, as the, the shape gets a little bit larger, what you're going to do is you're going to swing to the outside and draw it back towards you as it hits. When you do this, the clay is going to slide just a little bit as it hits, and it's going to start to elongate. If you want it into a circle shape, you're going to turn it every time it starts to get oval, you'll turn it a little bit in order to keep it going in the right direction. Of course, if you want it in a noble shape, you'll just keep going in that direction as you throw it down. The great thing about doing this and switching every once in a while and turning it is that you get to gauge the thickness that you're looking for. Now, you'll notice that my hockey puck is now turned into a pancake. What's great about this is that the clay is flattening and settling at an equal rate all the way through. So if I were to take my popsicle stick and if I were to cut this in half, one thing you'll notice is that the clay all the way through is an equal thickness. Now this works much better than using your rolling pin. You could use your rolling pin to do the same operation, but the rolling pin, the pressure that you put on it going back and forth is hard to keep equal and therefore hard to keep uh, an equal thickness in the clay itself. The tendency is at the edge to go a little bit harder on the edge of the clay and the edges of your clay become a little bit thicker. The next skill we're going to practice is how to make coils. Surprisingly, coils are difficult to make. Coils can be hard to make uniform all the way through, just like the slab was hard to make a nice uniform thickness to the slab. It's really difficult for beginners to make a nice even coil as well. I'm going to give you a few hints to get it started. First of all, take a small piece of clay from your stock and roll it in your hands until you have a small cigar shape. When you put it down on the board, you're going to start out with one hand. Here's the key. Make sure that you don't push forward and push back. You can either do one of the two. You can push forward and release back, or you can roll forward and push down on the way back. But you can't push forward and push down on the way back. That's where it starts to get a little bit of a flat side to it. The other thing is when I push forward and roll back, I want to do it lightly with my hand. I don't want to press down too hard. That becomes hard to control. As I push forward and back, if I ever get a side that is a little bit uh, longer and it's kind of flat on a the side, then just go to the high part of the side, tap it down just a little bit, and then roll it out again. As you start to get it a little bit longer, then you can go and start to press with two hands, overlapping your hands as you go. So again, lightly pressing forward and overlapping my hands as I go in order to extend and roll out my coil. Okay? And again, as you get a coil that is the uh, correct thickness all the way through, if you get a side that is higher and it starts to flatten out, just tap that side, just make a tall side up, tap that side just a little bit, and you should be able to continue 
lightly with your hands. Again, the movement though is like this. It's not pressing straight forward, but it's rolling up like that, allowing the coil to move underneath your hands and to keep it in equal thickness all the way through. The last method that you'll likely use in your home studio and definitely as you go through your Cream City Clay classes is a pinch pot. A pinch pot is a way that you can basically make a pot without working on the clay wheel. In order to do that, you're going to actually create the inside of a vessel while turning it in your hand. And the first step to that is to make a nice round ball and then press your thumb onto the inside. When you press your thumb to the inside, you're going to pinch around the outside with your fingers. Now a couple of clues when you first get started is that you want to start to work your thumb all the way down to the depth that you want right from the start. And then we're going to do something else that's going to be really important. And that is to take on your hardy board and tap the top every time, uh, every, every once in a while rather, to keep it nice and flat. As I'm pinching around, I'm really thinking about what I'm feeling for the thickness of the clay going down to the bottom, going to the top. And as you see, this hand is turning the clay, helping to turn the clay as I'm working the inside with my thumb, tapping every once in a while in order to keep that top nice and controlled. I'm going to continue all the way around with this until I have an equal thickness with my fingers all the way through the bottom of the piece to the top of the piece. So I'm working my way to the bottom with my fingers, just like that, and then working my way up to the top edge as well. Now once you have it open like that, there's another step you can take by making a C with your thumb on the inside. As I take and hold it in my right hand, I'm going to take my left hand and I'm going to create a C shape on the inside. And this will create a nice bowl of a nice size. It serves two purposes. It stretches the clay and it also uh, creates a larger space on the inside. When it stretches, as it goes around, you're going to keep it nice and as smooth and clean as possible. It's nice because the thumb as it stretches on the inside also serves to smooth the clay as well. Now one of the things that you see happening, one of the dynamics that's happening when I do this, is that this thumb is holding the clay as this is stretching it. So as I create that C shape, this thumb is just supporting this part of the clay as this is stretching. Every once in a while, tap it down against your hardy board in order to keep that top nice and controlled. If you want your uh, bowl to be a little bit deeper, just press a little bit more on the bottom and relax a little bit more with your bottom hand and allow that stretch to happen on the bottom of your pinch pot. So we have three different designs that we worked with today, three different operations with clay. A pinch pot, how to make a slab that's an equal thickness, and how to make a coil that's an equal thickness all the way through. So there's your setup for your home studio. Um, we had three skills that we worked on today, and all of them had to do with really controlling the clay to make it uniform. The first one is to take a ball of clay and roll it uh, using one and two hands into making a uniform coil on your hardy board. The next one was to take a ball of clay and pancake it onto your hardy board in order to relax the clay and stretch the clay in a uniform fashion so that it's an equal thickness all the way through the slab that you made. The last one is to take a ball of clay and pinch it by putting your thumb in and pinching with your fingers in order to turn the clay and create an equal thickness from the rim all the way down through the base of your clay. All of those are really good skills to practice and are going to be necessary skills for you to use in your upcoming classes. Look forward to seeing you then.